Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video, we're going to implement the functionality to sort our runs so that we can select the sort type in our spinner and then it will update the list accordingly. For that, we want to go into our main view model. And as you can see in the last video, we um, created that run sorted by date live data. And we want to do the same for each other live data we have in our repository. So let's copy that paste it, I think, five times in total. So four more times. Then we have runs sorted by distance. Get it from main repository. Get all runs sorted by distance. Um, runs sorted by calories burned. Get all runs sorted by calories burned. We have runs sorted by time get um, all runs sorted by time in millis. Let's also call that time in millis here. And finally, we have runs sorted by average speed, average speed. And we get that from get all runs sorted by average speed. And now we have to think about how we want to implement that sorting functionality. Because in our run fragment, as you know, we observe on a single live data object here and get its changes. But when we change the sorting type in our spinner, then we cannot simply change which live data we observe on. And for that, I want to create a special kind of live data, which is called mediator live data. Maybe you have heard of that. That is just a type of live data that allows us to merge several live data together and write our custom logic for that when we want to emit which kinds of data. And that will also mean that we don't need all those live data objects from the outside. So we can make all of those private. We are only going to need those in this view model class. And I'm going to create another live data object now, which is that mediator live data I talked about. And that is just going to be called runs. And that will be of type mediator live data of type list of type run. And then I want to create a class, an enum class for our sort types in our other package, create a new cotton file or class and call that sort type, select enum class here. If you don't know what an enum class is, that is just a class that only contains constants or in our case only contains constants and we can simply enumerate those constants here inside of that class. That is also why that is called enum class because we enumerate constants. First of all, that is a constant for the date. We want to be able to sort by running time. We want to be able to sort by average speed, by distance and by calories burnt. And that's already it for that class. Now we can go into our main view model again and create such a sort type. So val sort type is equal to sort type dot date because that is our default sort type. And now in our main view model, in the init block, we can basically merge all of those live data together to only display or to only emit values for the corresponding sort type. And that is actually not very difficult to do because first of all, we want to use our mediator live data or runs live data and call that add source on that. That is a special function for those mediator live data. And here we need to pass a live data as an object. So the source that we want to add to that runs live data. Let's start by runs sorted by date. And we need to add an observer here, which we can do as a Lambda function. So what this will do, let's actually call this result here. What this will do is, Whenever something is emitted in our run sorted by date live data, then this observer is called. And what we can now do is we can check if our sort type is equal to sort type dot date. So if there is a change in our run sorted by date live data and our sort type is sorted uh, sort type dot date, then we want to set the value of our runs data um, runs live data to that value of that live data. So we're going to set result, make an object here dot let 
And in here, we are going to use runs dot value is equal to it, basically equal to that result. So if this was a little bit confusing for you, just as a quick little recap here, we have our runs live data on which we will observe later on in our run fragment. And we can add a source to that, which is a live data in our, um, in our case. That live data will be added as a source to that runs media live data. So our runs sorted by date live data. And this Lambda function here is called every time there is a change in that run sorted by date life data. And if there is a change and this if condition returns true, so if our sort type is equal to sort type dot date, then we are just going to set the actual value. So the value that is emitted by our runs life data, we're going to set that value to the result of that observer block. So that will be the list that is emitted by our run sorted by date live data. So I really hope that gets clear because for our other live data, that will be exactly the same. Let's copy that block, paste it four more times. Then we have our runs sorted by average speed live data. We check if the sort type is equal to average speed. We have our runs sorted by calories burned live data. Check if it's equal to calories burned. Runs sorted by distance. Check if it's equal to distance. And finally, runs sorted by time in millis. And that is equal to running time. And now that should work to observe changes of our live data in general, but it won't observe changes of our sort type. So if that sort type changes, this functionality that we wrote here doesn't recognize that the sort type changed. And therefore, we somehow need to write additional functionality that does something similar like here, when that sort type changes. So what I will do here is, I will make a little bit more space. And I will create a function, sort um, runs, that takes a sort type, and we're going to set that equal to when. So depending on that sort type, if that is equal to sort type dot date, then we want to take our runs sorted by date life data dot value, check if that is not equal to null. If it is not, then we want to set our runs life data value to it. So that is exactly the same thing we do here, just that we don't need this if statement this time. And then we can do the same for the other sort types we have. For the running time, one sorted by time in millis. For average speed, run sorted by average speed. Um, for distance, Run sorted by distance, and finally for our calories burned, run sorted by calories burned. And because we saved the value of that sort type in this main view model class, we should also update that one after we call that function. We can easily do that by writing dot also afterwards and write this dot sort type is equal to sort type. And we get an error here. Oh, I made that a val accidentally. Let's change that to a var, of course, and then everything should be fine. Yeah. And then we can go back into our run fragment. And you can see we get an error here. This time we want to observe on our runs live data. And up here, we will have a when expression, depending on our view model dot sort type, we want to set the current selection of our spinner accordingly. So if that is equal to sort type, dot date, then we want to use our SP filter dot set selection to the zeroth index. If you're wondering where I get those indexes from, if we take a look in our strings XML file here, I have a string array here that is basically the array for our spinner items. So we have to, um, that, that date object has the index one, uh, zero of course, uh, the running time has the index one, two and so on. That's what we need to pass here for that set selection function. So we can copy that line here. 
paste it four more times, change this to running time, set this to one. Then we have the distance next, set this to two. Whoops. Next we have the average speed, set this to three. And finally, we are missing the calories burned and set this to four. And the last thing we need to do is we need to respond to changes on our spinner. So if we select another item, we want to call the filter function or the sort function in our view model. So we use our SP filter dot on item selected listener and assign a new listener to that. Create an anonymous class for that, which is adapter view dot on item selected listener. In here, we press Control and I to implement those two functions. We are not going to need that on nothing selected function. So I'll just leave that one blank. But we are going to need this on item selected function. First of all, I will change those parameters here that one to adapter view, that one just to view. This one is the position of the item we clicked on. And that one is the ID of the item we clicked on. And in here, we will have when expression again, because it's so much fun to work with when expressions, when position, so depending on the position of the item we click on, if that is equal to zero, then we want to use our view model dot sort runs, and we're going to pass the sort type date, then we can, let's actually duplicate that line, we don't need to copy it all the time. If the position is one, two, three, and four, we want to set the sort type to running time, to distance, to average speed, and finally, to calories burned. But if we now run our app and try it out, then we can see that I already added some runs before recording this video, and currently they are correctly sorted by date. You can't really see that because I added them all on the same date. But the latest run is still on top of the list. So that's correct. And if we now click on running time to sort it by running time, then you can see the list changed. And this one is still on top because it's the longest run. Then we have the second longest, the third longest, which you can also see pretty bad here because those are all 14 second runs. Um, let's choose distance. Then it changed again because that one has the greatest distance, then this one, then this one, and so on. So you get it, it is working perfectly fine. I hope this video helped you to understand how this mediator live data stuff worked. If not, then really don't mind asking your questions in the comments below. And also make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Have a nice day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.